second pitch. Thank you very much, sir. So it's my pleasure to share my few points. First of all, good morning to all. My topic is on perspectives on SARS-CoV-2 infection. What's the current status on prophylaxis and therapeutic implementation? For the past one and a half years, we are all suffering. The world total uh, planet is suffering due to SARS-CoV-2 infection. Still now, there is no other infection uh, created such sufferings to the uh, humans, uh, human beings. So the SARS-CoV-2 infection attracts all the people. Uh, what is uh, the status of uh, present situation? As you know, there is severe acute respiratory syndrome coronavirus uh, to infection, which is uh, caused by coronavirus, uh, severe acute respiratory syndrome uh, virus 2. So, which leads to, uh, uh, which leads to severe pathogenic and characterized by severe acute respiratory syndrome, which was first reported in China in December 2019, and pandemic uh, around the world soon after. So, SARS-CoV-2 variant is a spherical with a diameter of about 60 to 100 nanometer, uh, conforming. A typical coronavirus diameter of 125 nanometer in size. When it is mandatory to know the structural perspective here, the structural aspect of SARS-CoV-2 proteins, like structural as structural protein, which which are of S1 and S2 grouped as the S1 and S2 proteins, which has two domains which is N-terminal domain and C-terminal domain. So C-terminal domain serves as a receptor domain, receptor binding domain. Now, viral, what is the viral pathogenesis? What is how it is happens? SARS-CoV-2 virus enters through droplet through the respiratory tract and which can directly enter into the cell which is having a receptor of angiotensin converting enzyme 2, AC2 receptor. So these AC2 receptors, which are all expressed in lungs, heart, intestine, kidneys. So whenever this SARS-CoV-2 virus in droplet, which is engulfed inside and the respiratory cell first get infected and it's get, uh, what do you call it? it get destroyed. This is how the outline of the SARS-CoV-2 viral entry. It enters to the, uh, by means of droplet, it is entered and entered into the respiratory cells, okay, lung cells. So by means of AC2 receptor and the SARS-CoV-2 virus, which has a spike protein on its structure, so this spike protein, when you see here, you can see this is the spike proteins. This spike protein facilitates the entry of virus into the cell. By means of um, the endocytosis, which is a first initially pinocytosis, and enters into the cell and releasing the viral genome in the lung cells. So the genome, which is uh, by means of transcription and translation viral genome, which is inducing the viral protein, and the viral protein is processed by MHC class one molecules, which takes from inside the cell to the outside the cell, where the outside the cytochrome cytokine network is processed. The problem with SARS-CoV-2 uh, I mean, uh, infection, here severe cytokine storm have been observed. And these cellular events later it becomes autoimmune also. So this is one kind of autoimmune disease which can destroy the various cells. It is leads to multiple organ failure. So whenever it enters into the uh, system, our innate immune system which functions for that, and the adaptive immune system also functions for that. 
So innate immune system, dendritic cells, macrophages, which is moved towards the, upon releasing the signals of chemokines, which is uh, processing this viral uh, and it is processed and it is exposed to CD4 cells, that is T helper 2 cells. Whereas simultaneously, if you see in the lung cells, it is viral proteins have been processed and it is taken outside by means of MSC class 1 molecule and outside it is expressed to T helper 1 cells, that is CD3 cells. Of course, this is also expressed to cytotoxic T cells and T helper 1 cells, which can also induce recruit cytotoxic T cells. So whenever these cytotoxic T cells have been recognized, have been recognized, its receptor has, which is a receptor have been recognized, and it's get activated and proliferated and releasing cytotoxin to destroy the virus infected cells. So that the lung cells get destroyed there. And uh, um, since T helper one also uh, releasing the interleukin two, which can also induce CD4. That means helper two cells. Helper two cells upon releasing with interleukin two, four and five, of course, six also B, B cells get stimulated and uh, it is releasing uh, B cell will be developing as a plasma cell and those plasma cell are responsible for the specific antibody titer. So this a specific antibody titer also uh, bind on the uh, viral protein, which also process the uh, uh, process the antigenicity. So what is the problem here? In uh, SARS-CoV-2 virus infection, cytokine storm, it becomes autoimmune in nature and destroys the cell and uh, which is become highly pathogenic and sometimes fatal also. But not in all the cases and in uh, highly uh, pathogenic state, uh, those who are uh, ventilated, uh, this cytokine storm uh, will be more. But usually these inflammatory mediated uh, cytokines like TNF alpha, interleukin 6, like uh, these cytokines will be more aggressive as far as uh, um, uh, SARS-CoV-2 virus infection. This is how it is happening where this autoimmune uh, nature, the expression of uh, naive T cells by means of cytotoxic T cell as well as uh, uh, CD4 T cells. So this is uh, recently it has been published in Nature. Uh, you can see this. Uh, I mean, when upon activation of the T cell in the mild diseases, especially here, the regulation of CD4 and CD8 is much more important. See the clonal expression based on the uh, stimulation pathogen associated molecular patterns, otherwise, we used to call antigen associated molecular patterns, and our immune cells get function for that to get aggravated. So, usually, what is happening here, cytotoxic T cell expression is more because of the release of uh, IL 6, IL 1 beta, and uh, TNF alpha, all are interlinked and which is expressed strongly and destroying the infected cell. On the other hand, CD4 cells also be expressive to develop as a specific antibody titer. And the level of CD4 level of expression quite less when compared to the cytotoxic T cells. Anyway, humoral and the cell mediated immunity have been observed uh, in cytotoxic and SARS-CoV-2 virus infection. So initially, when it enters into the system, innate immune cells will be aggravated, and especially dendritic cells and macrophages, which process to release cytokine production. So regulation of inflammation is highly dependent upon the regulation of the T-regulated cells, that means suppressor T cells. So here, the main concept is killing of infected cell by using CTL, that means cytotoxic T cell lymphocytes. Of course, follicular T cells also, which is involved, follicular T cells are the subsets of CD4 cells, which is also involved here, and which is uh, uh, responsible for the specific antibody titer. So in uh, immune memory, that is uh, uh, development of memory T cell and memory B cell are much more important. 
In the first week of period, that is, uh, in the first five days, it looks like subclinical, and during that time, our immune cells are get function for that. Later, the specific antibody titer will be developed if it is in the innate to adaptive immune phases. And the specific antibody titer, as far as SARS-CoV-2 virus infection, it's not long lasting. It is not long. That is the greatest negative point in the SARS-CoV-2. Of course, uh, this uh, pathogenesis varies with uh, so much variation, but person to person, if variation is there. In some uh, reports are showing it is having good long-term immunity, but most of the reports are showing the SARS-CoV-2 infection uh, does not having a long-term uh, specific antibody titer. Yeah, but the memory T cell, memory B cell development also quite less. <coughs> So, how this uh, SARS-CoV-2 protein uh, has been touted? Um, this is uh, 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 work has been published in the Lancet. What they have given, this uh, CD4 epitopes is uh, uh, expressed to these open reading frames of the viria. Cytotoxic T cells, which is, that means CD8 cell epitopes are expressed against the membranous protein. Uh, membranous protein as well as the spike uh, glycoproteins. On the other side, antibodies and neutralizing and uh, general and, uh, uh, and now this is the immune response uh, duration as course of SARS-CoV-2 virus infection. The initial incubation period is about five to ten days. Need not to show these clinical symptoms. Maybe subclinically also will be that, and the specific uh, during that time. The specific IgM response will be uh, responding to the uh, response against the pathogen associated molecular patterns and its peak level is reaching up to seven days. So the infectious state is highly depends upon the uh, expressive state of the uh, our cells and it is uh, highly depends upon the um, pathogen associated molecular pattern virulence factors of the virus. So it is the balance between our immune system and the balance between the virulence factor of the virus. So specific IgA and IgG antibodies also develop in the adaptive phase and which serves to protect us from the infectious uh, agent by means of neutralizing capacity to try to clear the viral clearance uh, habits. So beyond this, infection sets up because of uh, the cytokine storm and the infection is uh, becoming um, autoimmune in nature and destroy the multiple organ failure and uh, leads to fatal. So what are the symptoms? As we are all aware about the symptoms nowadays, uh, for the past one year we are experiencing. So here, apart from fever, cough, tiredness, fatigue, headache, loss of taste, uh, here the main thing, loss of smell and trouble in breathing, shortness of breath, and pneumonia is the main uh, symptoms of the uh, acute SARS-CoV-2 virus infection. So from SARS-CoV-2, COVID-19, now there is a lot of uh, uh, variants have been developed and uh, during the last uh, end of the year, there are many variants have been developed in uh, UK, South Africa, Brazil, okay, by means of mutation, many variants have been developed. So fortunately, the mode of uh, pathogenicity is very less when compared to the, the original SARS-CoV-2 uh, virus infection. So it may be, uh, here you can see these variants, uh, B1.1.7 uh, and B1.35 in South Africa, B1.7 in UK, and P.1 is uh, Brazil, these are the strain name. And these variants uh, nowadays are starting spreading across the world. This is the WHO uh, data. And if you see this uh, uh, data, you can see uh, most of the Western countries have been uh, uh, seriously uh, infected by means of I mean, spread by epidemic. Uh, uh, epidemicity is shown due to the uh, variants. 
Now, what is the difference? Uh, what is the characterization between these variants? The, uh, tra the transmission is increased when compared to the uh, original SARS-CoV-2. However, here the pathogenicity is less. So reports suggesting that these vaccines against uh, uh, these uh, variants of uh, uh, that is B1.17, which is uh, affected in UK, uh, the vaccination is not more significant. Uh, whereas in the South African, uh, that uh, uh, that preliminary data it shows the vaccines has an effective against even variants also. So. These are the concepts, uh, these variations are here frequently occurring, the right? variances are here frequently occurring. As you know, the HIV also, the variants are also occurs because of the window period. Like this, uh, here also there is the initial window period, which leads to the many variations. And uh, uh, these variants, uh, variants varies with the uh, landscape of the population. Now, these, all these variants involved in here by means of the genetic mutation uh, of the spike proteins. So, the nature of the spike protein is keep changing. Uh, this uh, antigenicity is keep changing of the spike protein. So, the immune response also keep changing. Yeah. Uh, what is herd immunity and what are the possibilities to develop the herd immunity? Now, herd immunity, it means the immunity of total population I mean, in a particular place, they can say it's called herd immunity. That means it can be achieved naturally by means of uh, vaccination or by means of natural infection. Whenever this natural infection, our immune system exposed to develop the immunity against the uh, specific uh, uh, virus infection. So herd immunity development is much more important in the current status and in, in future also, because this variant, uh, variant will not keep stop. It will keep on with this variant will be uh, developing and uh, it's giving more, uh, more, more pathogens. Sometimes it may create more pathogenicity also. So the development of herd immunity and uh, uh, possibility by, by means of vaccination or by means of infectious stage. So here, what I want to mean, it's highly depends upon the individual immune response and individual immune power. Now, prophylaxis uh, by means of vaccination. Now these vaccines have been discovered and uh, now the various vaccines have been developed. And you can see there are a lot of vaccines under study, even though there are various vaccines, uh, around uh, uh, four to five vaccines is already in the public, uh, already uh, across the wall, the immunization program is going on. But even though uh, there is a race uh, between the, how to develop these, uh, uh, vaccines against SARS-CoV-2 infection and in future also it is going to be continued because of the variants because of the variants now what are the types of vaccine there are various kinds of vaccines have been attributed one is DNA vaccine by using uh, DNA as a vaccine uh, agent so it can be uh, used as a prophylactic as well as uh, therapeutic uh, vaccines. Next, RNA vaccines, already it's available. It's uh, from uh, produced by Pfizer, Moderna, and uh, viral vector vaccine, you know, Kobe Shield, this Astra, AstraZeneca vaccines, uh, viral subunit vaccines, live attenuated vaccines, inactivated uh, virus vaccine, as you know, Bharat um, Bhaktak, I think it's the uh, Covaxin. Okay, so virus like political uh, vaccines have been developing um, split virus vaccine concept, which is not under study level. Uh, it's, it's also one of the concepts we can develop in future uh, by it's already a uh, flu vaccines are based on this type of uh, technology. Uh, ribonucleoprotein vaccine also available. Now, what is DNA vaccines? The genes of S protein, that means spike proteins. The spike protein, uh, 
uh, genes responsible for producing the releasing of spike, uh, spike protein will be carried in the carrier plasmid by means of recombinant DNA technology. It will be carried in the carrier uh, plasmid. Whenever it administered and exposed to the cell, it can transmit uh, into the cell and uh, transcribe to the mRNA, and the mRNA is translated to the specific uh, uh, spike protein. And our host, uh, our immune response will be responding to the uh, to the uh, that spike protein. Here, the problem is uh, developing this uh, S protein, uh, which has uh, there are some limitations are also there. And furthermore, uh, it has a transient gene expression. Uh, that is uh, not uh, how the genes are going to express the. Um, uh, spike protein in our cellular system, which is about transient only. However, uh, it is also successfully, it has been uh, developing, so it is under study level. So RNA vaccines, uh, RNA already, you know, Pfizer uh, is already developed this RNA vaccines. This mRNA is uh, encapsulated in a, a liposomal carrier, that is a lipid nanoparticle. And after that, it will be administered into our body and uh, uh, in our cellular system, it can create messages will be translated to develop spike proteins and this our immune system is functioning to develop a specific antibodies. Viral vector vaccines, as you know, Covishield is viral vector vaccine. So coronavirus is a virus and in what you call an inactivated uh, uh, a virus, harmless virus, which carries the specific uh, genomic sequence of uh, uh, SARS-CoV-2, and which, uh, whenever it is expressed in the cell, and it is uh, harmlessly uh, expressing the uh, genomic sequence to develop spike protein. Uh, there are uh, now recently you might be heard about it in the UK. There are some various controversies that have been developed. Uh, against uh, these viral vector vaccines, uh, saying that uh, uh, blood clot, uh, thrombosis, uh, like that problems are uh, occurring like that. Uh, but it's still not proved due to the uh, vaccination, it's still not proved. But anyway, European Union, uh, I think still now they are blocked to use uh, uh, viral vector. But uh, two days before they have said uh, it is not conformably uh, due to the uh, viral vector vaccines. So it is not uh, due to the viral vector I mean, uh, vaccinations. <clears throat> However, here we are using uh, same vaccines, but it is very successfully running and uh, uh, immunity is developed. Live attenuated uh, uh, vaccines, you know, the virulent property has been reducing and uh, uh, this um, antigen city remains the same by means of some chemical treatment and the, it is not actual pathogenic uh, um, viruses but the pathogenic the antigen city remains the same. So the attenuation here, the reducing the virulence property is much more important so that it should not create um, the pathogenesis while uh, immunization, after immunization. So uh, here the problem is uh, here as like a mRNA vaccine. In mRNA vaccine, the problem is uh, storage condition as well as cold chain process, transporting system. Uh, here also the same condition, uh, storage condition and uh, transportation, uh, cold chain process is uh, very difficult. Uh, still this uh, development uh, level only, I think uh, it is not at the market. It is still in the development uh, phase. Inactivated vaccines already in the uh, market. Uh, I think our co-vaccine is that uh, coronavirus. This extraction of the spike protein and chemically treated or heat killed, uh, heat uh, inactivated, denaturing the nature of this protein. And whenever it inject, uh, uh, administered into the human system, our immune system provoke the immune response against the specific uh, antigen city. That means a uh, specific uh, heat uh, inactivated um, uh, spike protein activity. So that uh, it uh, assumed that it is giving a good protection against the SARS-CoV-2 virus infection. There are subunit vaccines yeah. are under trial. 
one of the pro, one of the constituents uh, or uh, viral protein particles which are used as a subunit vaccine to develop uh, a strong immune response virus like particles there are it's uh, artificially engineered particles uh, uh, which has similar like uh, viral surface characters and these viral like uh, viral like particle mimics the viruses because like how it facilitated into the cell here also it is uh, inducing but the specific uh, dna is expressing to develop a specific antibody type this is also in uh, the study level split more vaccines like flu vaccines have been developed because the viral it is a, an option to develop this corona vaccine by uh, by fragmenting the actual virus and marking as a suspension whenever it gives into the, um, the administered into our human system our immune system functions for that to develop a strong immunity it's a concept it is no other uh, industry is not focusing with a split mode of vaccine but however flu vaccine is available based on this it can be developed also so what is the comparison between the, all these vaccines when you take this uh, nucleic acid vaccine dna vaccine rna vaccine viral vector vaccine and uh, what is the risk factor here risk of uh, mutation is very possibility so storage is uh, much more important especially uh, viral vector vaccines and as well as uh, rna vaccine uh, the cold chain process is uh, uh, much more difficult however the safety profile they are showing rna vaccine is a better safety like that and inducing a strong immune response and um, easy to produce the problem only your the cold chain process live attenuated inactivated uh, uh, viral vaccines and viral subunits which are all uh, live attenuated it's uh, risk of infectious mute or uh, uh, reformation of uh, infectious state is very easy so that storage condition is much more important here inactivated vaccine and the viral subunit vaccines are risk are quite less quite safer in condition when compared to the live attenuated vaccines so strong robust immune response is attributed uh, uh, in uh, inactivated and uh, viral subunit uh, vaccines however more than that live attenuated is very strong enough to develop uh, the uh, specific immune response now this is a status of uh, various vaccines have been uh, uh, in the public sinovax sinopharma these are a company uh, they are developing uh, these vaccines by means of inactivated viral vector and uh, uh, lipid nanoparticles these are some uh, vaccines have been already developed usually uh, two doses uh, is preferred two, two doses are preferred because um, earlier they were uh, in between uh, what you call in three weeks of duration the second dose is preferred the, the reason for second dose is to develop more immunity robust immunity against the virus however the boost dose is essential um, in uh, in the, any vaccines especially uh, you know sars cov2 virus infection because here the development of memory cells and b memory b cell memory t cells are quite less when compared to the other pathogenic uh, conditions so here uh, earlier uh, they were saying that uh, zero, two weeks gap and now it has come to then later they change into four weeks gap now it is 35 days to 60 days to give the booster dose so booster is essential only single dose is not sufficient enough to attain the prompt immune response however booster is definitely needed in order to get a better uh, in order to get more memory b cells and memory t cells and moreover the uh, to get to aggregate all the immune cells in active form which is much more important so which one was uh, maximum uh, uh, vaccine producing uh, across the world uh, pfizer that is rna vaccine is almost 57 percentage it occupies and uh, oxford uh, astrazeneca 34 percentage moderna 27 percentage 
remaining or uh, five to ten percentage uh, they are occupying and they are supplying to the world. Uh, this is about the status of the vaccine production here. Now, uh, this is about the comparison between the uh, various uh, vaccines. Now, it depends upon the individual to individual, the immune response varies. Generally, a 90 percentage efficacy have been observed in all the va uh, vaccination. Of course, there are some vaccines like uh, vector, viral vector uh, uh, vaccines uh, has effective is about 60 to 90 percent. They are uh, reports are showing, and even uh, inactivated, they are saying 85 to 90 percent uh, showing. But uh, the problem here is um, uh, yeah, the it, because of the low infectious state uh, as far as uh, these viral vector vaccines. Uh, so this immune response development also a little slow, but safer side. It is uh, much safer. Okay, so these are about the uh, comparatively all the vaccines are giving uh, 90 percent as an average. 90 percent, we can say, uh, it gives the why not 100 percentage? Here? Why not 100 percentage? It's much more important point, uh, point because uh, we already discussed about the, um, the variation, genetic variations, mutations, and the spike protein nature also vary. So these spike protein, um, the mapping is uh, not 100%, we cannot say. However, um, however, the can attribute can boost up the immune system against the viral area. So when the vaccination hall will be totally vaccinated, total public of the world, when the vaccination will be fully covered, uh, you can see that uh, in the figure, those who are in the dark group up to late 2021, okay? Still vaccine uh, production is in the uh, insufficiency is there. Uh, we need more vaccine to be produced to protect the people across the world. So it may lead to it just keep on going even up to 2023. It may reach to finish the vaccination schedule if regularly the vaccination is uh, uh, practiced. So it is day-to-day uh, -day progress. Uh, it depends upon the manufacturing efficacy and uh, uh, protection is also varies. And what is going to happen in future, we don't know. Uh, anyway, uh, I think by the end of 2023, all the persons in the globe, maximum, they will be vaccinated. This is uh, in India today. From India, it has been... Uh, uh, published and uh, they have given that uh, uh, that India has procured the maximum dose of vaccine and come back to other countries. So 1,600 million uh, doses of uh, um, the vaccines have been procured by our government and it is the topmost among all other countries uh, when come back to uh, European region, USA, COVAX, like uh, all other countries, uh, we are the top most uh, uh, in uh, procured in the dosage of the vaccines. Now, what is the uh, only vaccination is the only solution? We cannot assure that a vaccine is 100% uh, uh, what you call uh, protection. Of course, as I already told, it can give to 70 to 90 percentage uh, mapping will be there. So, what is the status of if infections develop? What is the status of the treatment? Uh, against SARS-CoV-2 virus infection. As you know, it's well known hydroxychloroquine and chloroquine, it's anti-malarial drugs which have been used uh, successfully, report also showing against certain SARS-CoV-2 virus infection uh, because it can modulate the inflammatory markers like uh, tumor necrosis factors. Now, Remdesivir uh, is originally uh, it is investigated for Ebola, uh, Ebola virus, but now USFDA has given clearance for uh, emergency use of uh, authorization, uh, enabling the uh, what call, to save the COVID uh, in terminal cases, uh, suffer from the SARS-CoV-2 virus infectious region, those who are terminally hospitalized. Uh, because of its adverse effect, it is not uh, initially 
uh, advisable to use this. Uh, but anyway, this uh, severe pathogenicity condition, it has been prescribed. This is the uh, new uh, an article has been published that uh, Remdesivir is highly successful uh, in the treatment of COVID-19 uh, above what you call above the age of 12 years. Uh, those who are highly hospitalized, those who are ventilated, and it can be used in combination with the other uh, uh, drugs also. It can be used. Now. Uh, Ribavirin is a nucleoside analog uh, which also is successfully, um, uh, I mean, uh, it is in the market successfully, and which is the combination with uh, interferon, beta 1, uh, lipovinavir, ret retinovir, and ribavirin, all which leads to immunomodulatory effect by expressing the helper 1 cells, T helper 1 cells that is CD3 marker cells, and it can easily recruit the cytotoxic T cell rather than the expression of T helper 2 cell to develop this specific antibody. Here, the induction of cytotoxic uh, T cells have been uh, expressed more uh, against the membranous protein and, of course, uh, uh, expressed the viral protein and density also. So this is also uh, one of the successful uh, antiviral uh, combination which has been used uh, at a study level and it is successful. It is published in the Lancet that uh, the treatment is so much successful by modulating uh, immune response. Corticosteroids, uh, you know, very well, like corticosteroids and uh, which are uh, life-saving drugs, uh, are, you know, which are all uh, suppressing the inflammatory uh, mediations. So SARS-CoV-2, uh, this inflammatory conditions are uh, much more uh, in SARS-CoV-2 and lead to the what you call uh, cytokine storms. Okay, so initially corticosteroids are not advisable for initial uh, the um, initial infectious state. However, in the fatal condition, those who are in the hospitalized and ventilated, they need more ventilation. That means more respiratory suffocation due to the cytokine storms. Many cells have been destroyed. In that case, as corticosteroids are also uh, giving very good load, and uh, which can reduce the the pulmonary edema, and it can save the patients from the uh, pathogenicity of the from the fatal of the due to the SARS-CoV virus uh, infection. Here. Uh, regulating the T regulators, much more important, and the corticosteroids, which is enhancing the regulatory T cells, and it can suppress the various uh, uh, various immune cells, and it can uh, stop the release of uh, the cytokines, especially TNF alpha, interleukin six, uh, IL one beta, which can directly involve, and it can suppress the release so that the inflammatory condition is getting uh, recovery and the patient is safe, okay? Now, as far as uh, uh, successful treatment, uh, uh, you can say this uh, T regulator function is uh, much more important. So in severe COVID uh, uh, function, the uh, function of T regulators can be down regulating and uh, uh, which is much more important, the uh, they are involved, they are involved in the immune cell activation to release IL-16, IL-1 beta, and TNF alpha, which is more uh, danger uh, pro-inflammatory cytokines, and which is getting the tissue damage, caspers 3, caspers 9, will be more activated, hurt, aggravated, and total uh, cell get destroyed. However, the target with the T regulators you know, interleukin-2 is uh, nowadays the concept of cancer therapy uh, by using interleukin-2. This interleukin-2 is uh, macrophages uh, uh, T-regulator, which is T-cell activator, and which also have action on the antigen presenting cell, that means macrophages. Um, so that what will happen, these T-regulators uh, down-regulate the production of uh, uh, immune cell activation to, to become normalized the level of IL-6 and IL-1 beta and TNF-alpha and uh, the patient is getting regulated. So the role of T-regulator is much more important 
to balance the immune reaction and uh, to balance the uh, cellular um, function against the SARS-CoV-2 virus infection and to suppress the cytokine storm, which is more more important. So because suppressing the cytokine storm is the uh, classical target to uh, recover from the severe COVID-19 infection stage. Now, uh, last year, uh, there was a very famous uh, news in uh, New York Times, uh, that is plasma therapy is going to be uh, more successful in the SARS-CoV-2 virus infection. Unfortunately, this uh, plasma uh, is having specific antibody uh, against SARS-CoV-2 virus infection. However, there are more than uh, more than 50% variation have been observed. Uh, so plasma therapy uh, went uh, very uh, unsuccessful, very unsuccessful against SARS-CoV-2 virus infection. Of course, uh, in uh, some conditions, they can try if the mapping is good, uh, then uh, it can, specificity is uh, good then it can, it can neutralize the viral and viral clearance can easily achieve. But still now the plasma therapy is not successful as far as SARS-CoV-2 virus infection because of the mutation variants, because of the mutation variant. And it be the nature of the uh, antibody titer varies with person to person. It's a very difficult task, you can say. So uh, plasma therapy is not much successful uh, in SARS-CoV-2 virus infectious stage. Now, neutralizing antibody are highly successful. Now, the ERI is uh, monoclonal antibody ERI. Uh, you know, as you know very well, the monoclonal antibodies are the uh, single type B cells, which is uh, most specific antibody against the infectious agent or against the antigen system. So this, uh, the present uh, call is uh, uh, what do you say, these monoclonal antibodies are influencing a lot, especially cancer, it is influencing a lot. And however, there are many, uh, many uh, monoclonal antibodies uh, can suppress the immune cell reactions uh, with various uh, receptors. It can easily suppress and it can save the uh, patient's uh, severity from the patient's uh, uh, severity from the infections. So, the, generally, these uh, monoclonal antibodies specific against the uh, SARS-CoV-2 spike protein, uh, spike protein, which is the targeted antigenic system uh, uh, for the monoclonal antibody, which can easily bind and can and achieve the neutralizing effect. Uh, Tocilizumab. map, uh, there are various monoclonal antibodies have been developed. Uh, Tocilizumab map is an anti-inflammatory drug, you can say and which is much useful uh, in actually it is uh, got USFD approval for rheumatoid arthritis treatment and now they are trying for uh, uh, SARS-CoV-2 virus infection and those in the terminal that is uh, those in the mechanically ventilator uh, seriously uh, hospitalized this uh, map is uh, screened for uh, is given to the patient what is the action here because it can be better because it can suppress the release of interleukin-6, so which directly act on the IL-6 inhibitor and used to control the pneumonia in severe COVID-19 uh, conditions. Saralumab, which is also humanized uh, monoclonal antibody against IL-6 receptor. So here, the, totally, if you see that, the concept of suppressing infection is directly proportional to the cytokine storm. If you're able to modulate the cytokine storm, which is more more important to control the SARS-CoV-2 virus infection. Now, here also it can be uh, inhibiting the IL-16 receptors uh, uh, producing cells. That is uh, so that it can suppress the IL-1, IL-6 uh, IL-6 levels, and can uh, modulate the cytokine storm usually suppressing the IL-6 level, which is an important factor as well as SARS-CoV-2 virus infection. Reduximab is a well-known uh, monoclonal antibody against uh, B-cell, uh, uh, B-cell, uh, what do you call it, proliferations. So it is prescribed for non-Parkinson's uh, B-cell lymphomas. Uh, 
uh, CD20 receptors where it can block the CD20 receptors and it can also involved in the um, in don't in the block it can also in block the production of specific antibody that's much more important so when you block the uh, b cell activation factor cd20 uh, receptors and the specific antibody level will not be produced against the uh, antigenic system so it is also in the, the trial uh, map and human 47g11 it's a code given by the uh, those who are uh, uh, doing this research and it potentially inhibit the virus by binding with the spike protein and uh, potentially it blocks the uh, ac2 receptors and it can uh, it can prevent from the viral binding uh, through receptors so this also under the screening it's uh, going on um, next is babylonivab uh, you can say this uh, potentially uh, neutralizing IgG1 antibody that prevents the viral entry by binding with the uh, spike protein. It's a neutralizing antibody. Uh, it is also under human trials uh, against COVID uh, uh, virus infection. And uh, it's also approved by uh, Europe, I mean, emergency use uh, uh, authorization against the SARS-CoV-2 virus infection. There are various maps have been developed which are all uh, involved with the uh, AC2 receptor binding. So either you can bind uh, the AC2 receptor binding proteins, that is, we can block the uh, spike protein attachment to the cell, or you can say you can also block you can also block the expression of various cells to block the development of like tumor necrosis. Uh, uh, factor releasing, IL-6 releasing, and those involved in the uh, IL-1 beta, and it can, start, I mean, uh, cytokine storms can be reduced. Recently, you know, very well, this, uh, it has been uh, uh, published uh, in uh, a news topic. It was very famous uh, news uh, six months before, region, uh, re uh, region Iran's monoclonal cocktail therapy, because it became very famous. Uh, because uh, 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 former uh, U.S. President Mr. Trump has been uh, treated with the region Iran's monoclonal antibody cocktail therapy. It's more successful uh, in reducing the uh, this COVID-19 as a virulence effect. However, which is not uh, promising in uh, uh, what you call it, as a preventive measure or uh, which cannot be uh, uh, prescribed for those who are in the inf initial infectious state. So uh, cocktails map ha has got the FDA approval uh, for this uh, uh, authorization to use in the mild to moderate uh, COVID-19. I think it's now withdrawn from the uh, approval uh, due to some complication. But in, anyway, it is under the clinical trials still going on. But uh, Monoclonal antibody showing many effective, but even though many effective, uh, this monoclonal antibody utilization is against SARS-CoV-2 virus infection. It's against again it's hosting uh, for the uh, what we call for blocking the uh, SARS-CoV-2 virus infection. Uh, uh, it's still the uh, many antibodies are under the trial. Uh, in future, uh, molecular antibodies will be developed. The problem here is the specificity against the antigenic uh, associated molecular patterns. That means pathogenic associated molecular patterns due to the mutated uh, mutations and due to the keep on uh, many variants have been developed and uh, uh, resistant factor is one of the major issues in uh, uh, this molecular antibody development and uh, uh, production is also quite uh, uh, production and uh, other processes are also quite difficult however uh, this uh, molecular antibodies also in future it will going to be uh, contribute many uh, many in the society uh, to uh, treat the patients and to recover from the SARS-CoV-2 virus infection either it may be mutant variant or non-mutant variants it will definitely 
uh, maps will be more efficacy and it can be uh, prescribed uh, in the, the in severe conditions to suppress the cytokine storm so these are the various factors uh, we are already discussing about the prophylaxis and therapeutic concept against the sars cov 2 virus infection however uh, prevention is not only by means of uh, vaccination prevention prevention is also by due to the lifestyle uh, modifications lifestyle uh, practices so we have to maintain our immune system perfectly that is much more that is the only trustable uh, we can say so that is much more important so be healthy to maintain the healthy cellular physiology to maintain the healthy immune system so by maintaining the healthy cellular physiology it is brisk work is uh, uh, essential to, because many reports are showing brisk work is essential to rejuvenate the cells um, and uh, it is uh, more potent to against the various infectious agents and we eat more antioxidant principle by nature we are having in our food habits, especially in India, is uh, lucky enough uh, to have some food herbs. Uh, in our uh, traditionally, uh, we have some food uh, herbs also there. Okay, so like uh, uh, Muria kunji, that is curry leaf. You know very well curry leaf, uh, which is rich in stigmosterol, uh, fatty acids, uh, steroids, and uh, Recently, in our work, what I am working here, uh, these uh, curry leaves are potent to modulate the immune response and potentially reducing the cytokine network. And if you daily consuming this, it, our immune system will be balanced by reducing the inflammatory reaction in our body and it can reduce, it can modulate. We observed our, in our study that is, uh, it was modulating interleukin 6, TNF alpha, and ENN1 beta very potentially, in a very potentially, you can say. So, that uh, this anti inflammatory properties uh, is more by modulating the uh, immune level, that is, the immunosuppressive level, or modulating the immune functions and cellular. Uh, here, the angiogenesis process also there. So, that uh, uh, eating curry leaf is much more important to maintain the normal health. Very well, uh, ginger, everyone know, uh, it's very common in our uh, food practices. Now, ginger, uh, it gives, uh, it has a gingerone, and which is having potent immunobrodulatory properties. We have done a work here, and we are observing that it has already suppressing, um, uh, suppressing the pro-inflammatory uh, cytokine level, and it can be daily food, can modulate the immune response, uh, what we are, uh, can modulate the inflammatory based immune response. And also, it is having a property to prevent the nephrotoxicity. So, daily taking ginger is advisable uh, to uh, avoid these inflammatory based uh, diseases. Next is turmeric, also well known in our uh, uh, traditional system which is uh, uh, enriched with curcumin and it's a very good immunomodulatory effect especially inducing the cytotoxic T cell level. So there are many reports are showing uh, uh, inducing the cytotoxic T cell level. So cytotoxic T cell level will always you know which can easily uh, this uh, uh, which can easily kills the viral uh, uh, infected cells and apart from that, which can also on other side, which can also modulate the macrophages activity and can be uh, much potent in uh, stimulating the innate immune cells also. There are fruits like gooseberry, lemon, oranges and guava, which are all enriched by antioxidant principle. Consuming daily, which gives uh, more uh, what we call antioxidant principle and suppress the reactive oxygen species uh, in oranges flavonoids or more which regulates the liver function there are many reports on that can reduce the acute phase reactions and, re and regulates the c-reactive protein levels also you know the c-reactive proteins levels or uh, acute phase protein in the inflammatory conditions 
So, pre consumption, a daily consuming, we can modulate the inflammatory response and we can uh, uh, immune boost up, immune boost up. Uh, there are many advertisements is coming, immune boost up, immune boost up. I don't think so. You can boost the immune system, boost the immune system only through vaccines. Here, maintaining the immune system is much more important through antioxidant species, which is much more much more important. So oxidative phase and antioxidative phase uh, regulation, uh, which is more important for the healthy life, which can be achieved by the, these uh, by, by eating these fruits. So what are the future implications? Uh, this, uh, I think uh, this uh, COVID variant never going to be stopped. It is keep, uh, uh, keep on mutation. But only thing here we should know, we should keep our immune system very perfectly so that it can protect us from the infectious agent. Of course, vaccine is there, uh, various treatment is also there. Prevention is always better uh, than cure. So prevention by means of lifestyle modification, by means of taking uh, healthy foods, and by means of keeping our cellular system uh, by doing walking or yoga like that so that you have a cellular system will be maintained properly and it gives protections and don't medicate self uh, yourself by means of uh, any infection comes immediately taking antibiotic it's the greatest task who has reported about eight percentage of antibiotic resistance have been observed in covid sars cov2 virus infectious stage so, especially in the severe acute uh, uh, pulmonary edema, they've been they're treating with uh, antibiotics um, I mean, to, to suppress the secondary infection. Uh, many reports are showing that as uh, eight percentage in total, eight percentage or uh, the multiple drug resistance, antibiotic resistance have been observed. So, uh, consuming antibiotic, if it is necessary, then only we have to take or upon uh, under the medical supervision. Otherwise, uh, if our frequent uh, antibiotic take, uh, I mean, uh, uh, taking is not advisable, not advisable because of the resistant development. So much more important uh, here, this resistant, antibiotic resistant is going to rule in near future, in near future across the world, many antibiotics is already uh, exposed to be uh, what I call resistant, and it's going to be a big challenge to treat many um, uh, infectious diseases, especially bacterial infectious, secondary infectious diseases. So you should be very careful enough uh, in taking in antibiotics. Frequent taking is not uh, advisable. Uh, so that uh, apart from this, you know, as a basic human being, it is our responsible to maintain our self hygiene and to maintain the environmental hygiene also. Then only we can prevent from the SARS-CoV-2 virus infectious. Uh, it's highly virulent and highly pathogenic. So COVID protection measures can be achieved generally by eating various healthy food that I have described here and by means of lifestyle modification. Keep distance from person to person wash your hands as much as possible it's already known one okay and always use mask while going uh, now uh, always should be fresh air ventilation is advisable so we can prevent the preventive measure by means of lifestyle modification which has more role rather than uh, we are vaccinated so that it can be prevented from the infection that is not a hundred percent assurance. So prevention is also depends upon the self hygiene practice is there. So I'm thanking uh, you all for uh, attending this uh, seminar. Uh, I take this opportunity to thank Professor Mageshwari uh, 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 for giving me an opportunity uh, to deliver this uh, session. Uh, and uh, Thanks a lot. And once again, I want to conclude here. Prevention is uh, 
prevention of health issues can be achieved by lifestyle modification, social distancing, eating healthy foods, healthy fruits that I have given, I have delivered now, so that immune cell regulation will be in name condition and it can prevent our uh, prevent uh, from various infectious state, especially SARS-CoV-2 infection. So prevention is always better than cure. Please take care on these lifestyle modifications. Thank you so lot. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, sir, uh, for yes. such a wonderful and you know informative session. And I am sure that uh, not only the students but the faculty members and all uh, you know participants. Uh, going live with the session would have been benefited with this. Although uh, the topic was quite uh, common and useful for all of us, although throughout the year we have been come across with various aspects and information regarding COVID, but still I, I uh, acknowledge that uh, the deep insight that you have provided on the topic have uh, add on or uh, value added to the information and knowledge available with the participants. So I thank you all. Uh, thank you for giving such an informative and uh, thought provoking session. And now I would like to uh, ask the participants and give them the opportunity to interact with the speaker. And if any query or uh, you know any question they have, we can uh, type in the chat box. And whatever the limited time we have within that, I would try to accommodate the questions of the participants uh, so that. Prakash, yes, sir, yes, sir. Sir, Sir, Sivkumar, sir, you uh, just uh, stop presenting your uh, screen right now. So that will be yeah, nice. Yeah, 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 sir. Okay. Yeah, sir. So, uh, uh, I want to extend my thanks uh, to your director, sir, and uh, Dr. Suresh Paswan, sir, and uh, Dr. Prakash Kumar uh, Soni, sir, for uh, nice organizing this event. And I thank all the participants. Any questions, let me know. Yes. Yes, anybody is having the question, you can uh, write on the chat box. So on your behalf, I will ask the question and you'll get the answer from the speaker. Sir Kumar, sir, you stop presenting your screen. You stop presenting yeah. your screen. Escape from that. OK. No, not, not the presentation. Yeah. Screen. Panshika Goel, you have written in chat box that I have a question. So why don't you type your question directly in the chat box? Sir, uh, Mahesuri, sir, unmute yourself. Mahesuri, sir, unmute yourself. Sorry. Uh, Dr. Sekumar, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, very small question I would like to ask uh, that in your country, what is the way for vaccination? Just like in India, firstly, the uh, doctors, nurses, they were vaccinated. Then, uh, no, uh, sir, now we are, uh, yeah, now here, uh, they are vaccinated to common public. And the vaccine is more successful here. Uh, both Pfizer as well as uh, AstraZeneca vaccine, uh, it has been given, and uh, they are targeted to all the people. First, initially, uh, health uh, health service people. And now, all the people have been vaccinated uh, by means of this uh, AstraZeneca. Yes, sir? In your country, all persons have been vaccinated. Yeah, yeah, we're getting vaccines. This vaccine very program very is like a vaccination. Which two vaccines uh, they have taken all two vaccines. Uh, either two Pfizer or AstraZeneca. Yes. It depends on our two choice. Doses, sorry. Two doses. I want to ask. Yeah, two, two doses. doses, two doses. doses. Yes, sir, two doses. Kind of no, so, not uh, one dose completing. Another dose is uh, by the month of uh, April end or March. I mean May. Uh, it will be process, progressed. Okay, okay. So it is very good. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. sir. I have got a question uh, from Manshita Goel. Okay. Uh, that uh, she has written, sir, as you told that we should eat foods that modulate immune system, 
the summer season is going to on uh, so should we take ginger and turmeric or not because these two produces heat in the body no actually <laughs> it is a general perception <laughs> it is general perception that's all <laughs> why not use why not use in our tradition we are daily using na huh? why not use it's not general perception what i am no, saying uh, is the uh, having more you know moderately substance so by food we are able to able to modulate as much as possible that's all if heat generation uh, the concept uh, i think it's a perceptional point uh, i think dr. we you know yeah uh, yeah yes. dr sagmar i want yes, to you say that uh, curry curry leaves they are helpful but that means how how much we are how many leaves we should eat or how much turmeric we should take uh, is there some uh, no, no, that uh, no, that and all it is not standardized but uh, as much uh, as possible uh, i i think i should not take more also some turmeric and all okay so curry leaves i think there is no problem uh, in taking uh, more also i don't okay, think so okay. it is more, 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 more promising and uh, more uh, uh, efficacy also sir i have a question that uh, yes, although you have given a deep insight over the two of the vaccine development and the presently available vaccines And there is yes, uh, no way of uh, providing uh, the immunization. But uh, one question is that that uh, in India we have two vaccines uh, being uh, is administered right now. One is Co vaccine, Bharat Biotech, and another is Covishield from AstraZeneca yeah. and Oxford. So yes, sir. In Co vaccine, it is still uh, with, uh, the second dose is uh, being administered after four week of the first dose. But uh, in second, uh, Covid Shield. Uh, meanwhile, recently, uh, within uh, last week, it has been decided that uh, the second dose will get better, you know, immunization or antibody production if it is given uh, six to eight week apart from the first dose. Absolutely, so, absolutely. So uh, what may be the yes, reason? Sir. In the expert no. of this vaccine development. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Absolutely. Uh, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, Covid vaccine is uh, inactivated vaccine. they are extracting the spikes protein and this spike protein is uh, meant for inactivated and after that it is administered so that is covaxin whereas uh, astrazeneca vaccine is not like that they are injecting with the mild uh, uh, mild virus okay and they are delivering the nuclear material and the nuclear material has to express the spike protein so this is the difference so there is a need of a time uh, for uh, generating the immune response as far as astrazeneca vaccine is concerned but as far as covaxin is concerned it's not like that it is the inactivated vaccine as a uh, spike protein unit okay so that difference uh, immune booster in short duration is also working out as far as uh, uh, inactivated vaccine whereas astrazeneca vaccine is not like that when it needs some time for the development of antigens okay okay sir okay, sir. sir one more question uh, uh, yeah. given by a participant and okay. niket singh has written that sir is african covid 19 variant is more infective than uk variant yes ab ab yeah absolutely covid 19 is highly infectious but variants are highly spread <clears throat> rather than the virulence from pathogenic effect so this is what uh, their uh, reports are showing all variants are highly uh, transmissible rather than the pathogenicity when compared to the original sars cov2 virus okay so the variants still now developed are highly uh, transmissible communicable rather than the pathogenicity Okay, when compared to the uh, uh, SARS-CoV-2 virus, I think I have answered that. So, is there any more question anybody would like to ask? So, okay, thank you all participants for uh, being throughout the session. And again, I would like to thank uh, speaker expert Professor Sivkumar sir for your valuable time. and giving this uh, wonderful lecture and deep insight over the uh, perspective of covid uh,
virus and its profile axis and this therapeutic you know uh, perspectives and the many things that you have covered would definitely help us because being uh, you know aware of the facts you can have you can take uh, better measures against uh, protection as well as the uh, cure so now at the end i would uh, request professor mahesh sir to please speak a word of thanks okay uh, firstly i would like to give a lot of thanks for dr shiv kumar who is uh, there in college of pharmacy jayan university kingdom of uh, saudi arabia okay and then i would like to thank uh, dr uddhav bagul also who has given your uh, contact number and we came in contact and of course i would like to thank you because you have uh, accepted my invitation to deliver the lecture for students and teachers of india so lot of thanks for your valuable time and you have given very valuable information about the uh, covid uh, uh, means corona virus infection as well as its treatment and all that then i would like to thank dr uh, rk saxena sir who is the director of this institute who has given who has permitted me to conduct this international webinar then i would like to thank the participants the candidates who have attended this lecture then uh, of course in the last i would like to thank dr uh, mr paswan uh, sir and mr soni sir who, who, who have given nice time uh, who have taken nice uh, a lot of pain uh, for the smooth conduction of this lecture okay thank you thank you very much thank you sir so with permission of uh, uh, professor mahesh sir so i am ending up the, uh, this session now and uh, thank you all uh, one more thing uh, dr sir kumar in future also we would like to have such types of interactive session with you sure sir definitely definitely it's my pleasure it is my pleasure okay. Okay, and we and okay. one more thing sir because the topic was on covid and sars cov2 virus so i would like to take this opportunity to give my message uh, to all the participant as because this is going live with uh, youtube uh, channel as well that please uh, vaccinate yourself whenever you become eligible for this and uh, maintain uh, this social distancing and sanitization and wearing mask so that uh, we can get rid of this pandemic thank you very much thank you sir thank you. okay good afternoon uh, okay thanks sir thank you okay. we may leave the meeting up for na sure 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 thank you thank you welcome okay thank you for